Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to give you guys a comparison between six different web browsers, Brave, Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Fi uh, Waterfox, which is basically open source Firefox, and Chromium, which is open source Chrome. So I'm going to start with the Brave browser because that's what I'm currently using. So Brave browser is based on the Chromium core code, as several of these browsers are. Opera is uh, based on some of the Chromium infrastructure, as well as Chromium uh, browsers, obviously. But what Brave does instead of those other applications is it becomes very security focused for the user. So for instance, so for instance, one of the big differences in Brave is that when we go to a page, let's just say DuckDuckGo.com, basically any web page, there's this tool called the Brave Shield up here, which you can enable or disable depending on what site you go to. And the Brave Shield is an all-in-one, basically, component of the Brave browser for blocking ads, for blocking trackers that you might have on different web pages, such as Google Analytics, and also tries to block unnecessary cookies and phishing or malware scams. So in a sense, the Brave browser out of the box is basically its own ad blocker and its own web protection tool without needing any third party plugins. Now, I also have LastPass added to Brave browser. Luckily, that's one of the extensions that actually do exist on the Brave browser, because if we go take a look at the extensions page, the weak component of Brave is definitely that it only has a limited selection of extensions which are actually compatible with Brave. So if you are someone who likes to have a lot of, let's say, Chrome extensions or Firefox extensions, you might want to make sure that the ones that are important to you exist on this list. But once again, you don't need an ad blocker because Brave already has that and the web protection in Brave. It means that you don't really need a web protection extension as well. Another big difference of Brave browser is that it has no login accounts associated with it. So there's no central server storing all of your Brave data. You can still sync data between your devices by basically copying and pasting the same code to those devices and syncing them together. Um, but that's from your computer to another device like your phone, not from Brave central server to your computer and Brave central server to your device. That also means Brave is not going to permanently be storing your search history or anything like that in some central service. So because of those reasons, Brave is a pretty lightweight browser. It's fast because obviously you're not loading all the same trackers or ads on different web pages that you might otherwise be loading. But at the same time, if syncing data to your Google or Firefox accounts is really important to you, then that might cause you some issues there. Now, Chrome browser, if there's a browser you've used, there's a really good chance it's been Chrome, because Chrome has been dominant for so long now, because Chrome is honestly a very fast web browser. It's clean, it looks good, it's functional, and you can add a lot of different extensions or things like Google Drive, basically, to integrate into Chrome. And for a long time, Chrome has had really good compatibility with uh, different websites, media extensions, when you need to basically play a video back in the browser. Chrome also, of course, allows you to sign into your Google account. So if you do like to have everything kind of stored in the same place, and to have those Google services in the background doing things like making recommendations on your search based on what you're typing in, or to do other things like integrating your location into how Google or how Google services make suggestions for you. Now, of course, one of the disadvantages of having Google collect all of this information on you for advertisements, for search results, all that other kind of stuff, is that there are some privacy concerns. And uh, I mean, it's hard to be 100% sure where that data is ultimately going to end up. So if that is a concern to you, uh, as it is to some people, um, Google Chrome might not be the browser you want to use. Now, you can always just not sign into a Google account in Chrome, even if you have one to watch YouTube or whatever. You can also go into the settings and disable some of the services, which may be privacy-based. So that would be just going into like uh, Chrome settings, and you can just toggle some of these things off, or even uh, put do not track requests on. But yeah, it's always hard to be 100% certain if you toggled every single thing off that might be a concern for you on your Google account or in your browser. 
So next up we'll talk about Firefox, which is another really popular web browser out there. Uh, from kind of the beginning of Mozilla and Firefox, they typically were talking about themselves as being a privacy-centered company uh, where they really care about the user's privacy. But some people have been raising some minor concerns about that. Of course, uh, with Firefox these days, they do have their own Firefox accounts, so that's separate from the Google account, and would mostly consist of just what you do in the web browser, rather than being your entire YouTube search history um, and similar information meshed in with all that. So here in their privacy page, they do talk about all the data, at least in theory, that they do collect on you. But some things that I think might be a little bit concerning to some people might be things like using location data to suggest relevant content based on your country. So one thing that might bug a couple people out there is that Firefox does say it uses location data to suggest relevant content based on your country and also to set your first initial default search provider. But if that's not a big deal for you, it is a really solid browser. And these days they've released a version called Firefox Quantum, where according to this article on LaptopMag.com, um, the Firefox Quantum, basically the latest version of Firefox, is supposedly scoring even higher than Chrome in some speed categories, which is pretty impressive, because once again, Chrome for a really long time was thought of as the fast web browser. Now, one big downside I would say exists in Firefox, um, and this is very specific to LastPass users, but when you're using LastPass, which is a password manager in Firefox, um, the autofill function doesn't seem to work anymore, where it does in Chromium-based browsers. So that's a big deal. Like, uh, you have LastPass open and you want it to autofill in a password on a page to save you some time, but you have to manually copy the username and password in. It's a bit of a pain. But other than that, Firefox is really solid, and if you're okay with syncing your data to a Firefox account and getting the benefits out of having your data there on that account, uh, it's a really solid choice. So next up, Opera Browser. Um, Opera Browser is supposedly loosely based on Chrome code as well, some variant of it at least. But uh, one of the things that's really stand out to me about Opera is that it's got this little sidebar over here. By default, you have Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp, but you can also add in your own links on this sidebar, where you can basically pop open web pages on the sidebar. Um, for you to be able to uh, basically do things while you're actually browsing the web page, but having extra things on the site. So if you like to be basically be able to chat with people on Facebook, that's a huge deal for a lot of people, then being able to have these sidebar links is a pretty cool feature, and I do like that about uh, Opera. Also, personal news here, if you click there, you can just add in your own sources, and uh, basically you can catch up on your news without having to go to a news website because you have a built-in feed aggregator right there. So anything that has an RSS feed, I believe, works with that. And whenever you hit new page, you get this speed dial thing inside of Opera where you can have your own sites here suggested. I think it's a pretty decent way to navigate between the sites you commonly visit. But you can also see at the bottom here, it will make suggestions based on your past search history. So that might not be something you like so much. Uh, I mean, you can see here, oh, I went to softmaker.com because I was checking out that office software. And, you know, Vivaldi is actually based on Opera, but has some extra changes. I don't like Vivaldi that much anymore. And that's why I left it out of the video. Uh, but then Waterfox, yeah. But as with most of these browsers which do collect some data on you, you can just go into the settings, privacy and security. If you don't like prediction services to help complete search uh, searches, just turn that off. If you don't want it to predict your network uh, actions, just turn that off. You know, whatever you do or don't want, you can get rid of that there. Oh, also worth mentioning, uh, Opera does have its own built-in VPN that you can use to browse web pages. So that's pretty cool. That's actually not a feature you really see much in other browsers. Um, but of course, whenever you use a VPN, uh, it may slow down your page performance. So I would say give that a shot, see if it works well from your location where you're at. Also, uh, Opera does have a built-in ad blocker. You can just come in here and block ads. So those are some pretty cool features that Opera has. Now, Waterfox is based on Firefox, of course. You can kind of read the story about it down here. It was made by basically one guy who was a 16-year-old student at the time. And he's been updating this browser until it's gotten to the current 
version. So Waterfox is basically open source Firefox built on top of the base uh, Firefox code. Um, you can basically look at everything on GitHub if you want to, to see basically exactly what's going on here and all of the very, very complicated code for the software. In terms of features, you can come down here and look. Uh, there's no sponsored tiles when you go to new tab pages, and it's removed some of the data collection that might exist inside of Firefox. But I would say one big downside to Waterfox is that it seems to be updated a lot less often than normal Firefox versions. Uh, so here you can see the last version of Waterfox was January 2017. And if you are a user of LastPass, uh, you're still going to have the same issues you do in regular old Firefox, where you can't autofill your passwords and usernames in because it's still based on Waterfox code. So any problems you might run into in Firefox, you're probably going to see that inside of Waterfox as well. And then Chromium, of course, is an open source version of Chrome. So when you use Chromium, you actually still are able to sign into your Google accounts in the exact same way as Chrome. In fact, if you go open up the privacy and security section of Chromium browser, Chromium basically uses the same services that the normal Chrome browser does, so that prediction services type stuff. Under content settings, you can see uh, sites can ask for your location, but if you want to just block that all together, so what is actually the difference between Chrome and Chromium? Well, I'm going to leave a link to this article in the description below. But basically, it's kind of minor stuff, it's like Chrome having some codecs that Chromium might not have access to because everything inside of Chromium is open source. So if there are proprietary software that basically had to be licensed under Chrome, the main version of Chrome, you might not have that inside of Chromium. So the browsers are really, really similar to the point where if it didn't tell you if it was Chromium or Chrome, I don't think most people would be able to tell the difference at all. But if it makes you feel better being able to look up the source code, all the source code for Chromium is available up on chromium.google source. So at least in theory, anything that they make as a change to Chromium shouldn't be hidden from the public. It should be all right there in the code. I suppose one of the biggest differences here is that you can actually add plugins to Chromium that aren't strictly hosted in the Chrome Web Store. So if there was something that was removed from the store for some reason, um, you might want to use Chromium instead so you can still continue to use that plugin. So that's going to be it for my comparison here between Brave Browser, Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Waterfox, and Chromium Browser. At the end of the day, most of what you can do in any of the browsers you can do in the other ones, it's just that if you are using a browser like Chrome or Firefox, you may need to go into the settings and make sure that you pin all of the security settings down to your preferences and to, to make that decision of whether or not you do want to have a account syncing with their central servers. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching this comparison between these six different web browsers and I will see you guys in my future video content.